Hey everyone, I'm not Dan, but in this video we're going to be talking about covalent compounds and their structures. It's... Welcome back. So we've been talking a lot about ionic compounds and now it's time to start talking about those covalent compounds. Now if you recall, covalent compounds are formed when the valence uh, electrons are shared rather than transferred. Now what this does is it actually allows covalent compounds to have a wide variety of combinations and shapes. Okay, well first off let's get the, the big sciencey words out of the way. Okay, so there's this thing called VSEPR or V-S-E-P-R, which stands for Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion Theory. Now, okay, so let's kind of break that down and figure out what that means in real world terms. Okay, so it starts out with valence shell. Okay, so we should all know that. Those are the electrons that are in the outermost ring, right? Remember the whole Bohr model thing, okay? So we got valence shell electron pair. Okay, so that means that in that valence shell, we're talking about electrons and those electrons pair up, all right? And then that last word, repulsion. Right, meaning to repel, to push away, to you know, make sure that they're all spread out. So essentially what we're talking about here are the valence shell electrons that are pairing up and when they do so, they either push each other out of the way or they push the other atoms out of the way to create all the shapes. So really, the Vesper theory is just a fancy way of saying the valence shell electrons create all sorts of different shapes. Okay, so now to help you understand the different shapes, I got a couple things for you. First off, my amazing molecular model of science, which yes, it actually is a dog chew toy. This is probably the best thing that I have ever gotten and it got me through organic chemistry in college, so seriously, PetSmart, you guys rock. Okay, I uh, shall also now bring up the amazing chart of Vesper shapes of science. Okay, so we'll actually kind of start uh, at the bottom and we're going to work our way backwards, okay? So this shape right here has five atoms in it, okay? You can see there's one, two, three, four, and five atoms. And because there are five atoms, right, the central atom here has four atoms bonded to it, um, there really aren't any what we call lone pair of electrons. And so the only shape that can occur with five atoms is called tetrahedral, okay? Now, what if there are only four atoms like this, right? So one, two, three, four atoms. Well, this particular shape right here that looks like this, and you can move it in all three dimensions so you can kind of see what it looks like. Um, this is the shape that occurs when there is not, or when there are not, any lone pair of electrons on this central atom here. So everything kind of gets nicely all spread out like so. And so this is called trigonal planar. But what if this right here represents a lone pair of electrons, and now we do have a lone pair on that central atom? Well, what it does is it actually pushes the other three atoms down so you get a little shape that looks kind of like this. And we call this one trigonal pyramidal, right? Because it kind of looks like a pyramid. Make sense? All right. Now, what if there are only three atoms? Okay, so I'm going to cover up these two. Okay, so there's two different shapes. Well, one this shape right here, this one, this just this nice little V shape, okay, I could turn it any different way. This is the shape that occurs when there are lone pair of electrons on the central atom, like so. So you can pretend like these two are lone pairs. It forces these two atoms to bend up, and so we call this bent, all right? Um, but if there are no lone pairs of electrons on this central atom, you can spread it out like this, this is called linear, right? Because it's all just one nice line. So there you go, all five shapes. Tetrahedral, trigonal planar, trigonal pyramidal, 
bent and linear. I'm telling you, this is the best model I've ever gotten. All right, if you have any further questions about the shapes, be sure to comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, remember, I'm not Dan and neither are you. Check you later. Now I'm running down the road, away from where I'm